Hey there, students. Uh, welcome to part four on the sum of difference identities. We're going to be going over one example. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, write down the question. For example one. Uh, find sine a minus d given that Sine A equals 7 over 8 with pi over 2 being less than uh, A and A being less than pi and cosine B equals 6 over 7 with negative pi over 2 then less than b and b being less than zero. Okay? Alright, so let's go ahead and find this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to write down the formula for the difference of identities for sine. So we have sine a minus b equals sine a cosine b. So the three functions are different, the sine will say the same as this one, minus cosine a sine b okay all right so let's see what we know uh, we were provided with um we're provide we're provided with sine a so we have sine a and also we're provided with cosine b okay so in order for us to find sine a minus b we need to determine what cosine a is and what sine b is okay all right, so in order to do that, we need to make use of the Pythagorean identity, uh, which is, I'm going to put it on the side here, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. I know that from this identity, if I get sine by itself, I'll, find, I'll end up with sine theta being equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta, which is one variation of the Pythagorean identity solving explicitly for sine. And I also know that cosine theta equals plus or minus the square root of one minus sine squared theta, okay? So this formula tells me that with cosine I can find sine, and this formula tells me that with sine I can find cosine, all right? So let's find the components or ingredients that we need to generate sine A minus B. First thing we need, let's look for uh, cosine A. So we know that sine A uh, <clears throat> equals 7 over 8. So, cosine A is going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine square A. We're using this formula, but we're replacing the thetas with A. Okay? All right. All right. So, we have, uh, we're going to plug in the value of sine A, which is 7 over 8. So, we're going to have uh, cosine cosine a equals plus or minus of the square root of 1 minus sine a is 7 over 8, so uh, 7 over 8 square. Okay? So that becomes plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 49 over 64. Express this as a fraction, 1 over 1, time this by 64, top and bottom, to get a symbol LTD. So this is going to become the plus or minus the square root of 64 over 64 minus 49 over 64. All right? If we subtract the uh, numerators, we'll have plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 49 is 15 over 64. Okay? So what we'll do next is we'll root the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to have plus or minus root 15 over root 64, which yields plus or minus root 15 over 8. So the question is, uh, is cosine A going to be positive or negative? Is cosine A positive or negative? That's the question. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the constraints on A. We're told that uh, 
We're told that pi over 2 is less than a and a is less than pi. So what quadrant is that for cosine a? Let's go ahead and figure out figure it out. What quadrant is between pi over 2 and pi? So uh, for cosine a, I'm going to draw myself a, uh, a coordinate system. So we know that um, this is 0, this is pi over 2, and this is pi. So cosine is between pi over 2 and pi. So a is somewhere here, right? So a is going to be uh, in, this, in this quadrant right here. So if a is in this quadrant right here, what is the sign of cosine? So I know that a, all students take calculus. A means all six are positive. S means only sine and cosecant. T means tan and cotangent. C means cosine and secant are positive. So here, sine is positive and cosine is negative in this quadrant. Okay, so in this quadrant, cosine is negative. And what do we know about sine? Sine is positive. All right, that's why this sine is positive because it's right here. But cosine is going to be negative. So what does that tell me? That tells me that cosine A equals negative root 15 over 8. Okay? So we have one component down, one of the missing components that we talked about earlier. Uh, the cosine component we have. Now, next thing we need to find is sine B. Okay? So what is sine b? So with that, I'm going to first of all write down what's going to help me find it, which is cosine b. Cosine b is 6 over 7. So that tells me that sine b equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine square b. Okay? This is one of this is a variation of the formulas that we talked about over here uh, to look for. We're looking for sine. Okay? So Let's put that in here. So if I put that in here, I'm going to get, uh, this is going to be equal to plus or minus, plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 6 over 7 square. So that becomes plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 36 over 49. We express 1 as a fraction. Find the LCD times this by 49 top and bottom. We have plus or minus the square root of 49 over 49 minus 36 over 49. Subtracting the numerators, we have plus or minus root 13 over 49. And it will divvy up the radical to the numerator and the denominator. So we have root 13 over root 49. So uh, sine b is either plus, positive or negative root 13 over 7, okay? So how do we know if it's positive or negative? Well, we're told that uh, b is between negative pi over 2 and 0, okay? So what quadrant is negative pi over 2 and 0 for b? So to graph b, we make our coordinate system. And where is b going to reside? Uh, we know that this is zero, and if we're looking for negative angles, we need to go counterclockwise. I mean clockwise, but this is negative pi over two. So between negative pi over two and zero, this is where B angle B resides. Okay, this is the angle we're looking for. So we know that all students take calculus. So what does this C mean? This C basically means that cosine is positive, and guess what? Sine is negative. So in this quadrant, since we're looking for sine b, this graph right here tells me that um, sine b is negative root 13 over 7 because b resides in quadrant number 4. Okay? So we have all the things we need to uh, generate our result. So we're going to write sine a minus b equals Sine A, cosine B, like we mentioned before, uh, minus cosine A, sine B. Now let's plug in what we just found, okay? Sine A is 7 over 8 times cosine B is 6 over 7. 
uh, minus cosine a is negative root 15 over 8. And sine b is negative root 13 over 7. All right. Now we'll multiply out. We're going to have uh, 42 over 56 minus root 15 times root 13 is root 195 over 56 and then when we combine both of them we're going to have 42 minus root 195 over 56 and that goes your answer for sine a minus b okay so there you have it So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, you can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. And you can click like if you like this video. Uh, please post a comment down in the comment section. Tell me what you think about this presentation. More clips can be found on mattopsurf.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.